It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Gigabyte Aorus FI27QX. I'll also be taking a look at the accompanying OSD Sidekick software as an alternative method to control the monitor. The OSD is controlled by a joystick at the bottom of the monitor, beneath the Aorus logo on the bottom bezel. There's also a power LED, which glows white when the monitor's on during normal operation, and glows amber when it enters standby. In other words, once the signal to the system is lost. If you prefer, you can have it so it's switched off during the normal operation of the monitor instead. If you twiddle the joystick left, right, up or down before you've gone into the main menu system, then it uses what's called quick switch. It's quick switch functionality and you can alter that in the main menu system. And I'll show you that once I get there. If you press the joystick in, then you get this little radial menu up. So at the top is settings, so that's your main menu system. There's dashboard to the left, and I'll show you that when I show you the OSD Sidekick software, because you need to have that open for this to actually work. To the right, there's Game Assist. I'll show you that very shortly. And down is Power Off. If you want, you can also just hold the power button in for a few seconds to power off the monitor. So the Game Assist menu, first off, this allows you to have a range of different information shown in the top right of the screen, or the top left, the bottom right, or the bottom left, depending on what you choose as the info location here. So you can change that so it's top right as it is now. You can have it actually in the center as well, central right region, bottom right, or the same on the left side of the screen. So top left, central left, or bottom left. First up there's gaming timer, count up or count down. So that will just give you a timer on the screen, counts up in seconds or counts down in seconds from the value that you set. So you can see with the countdown, you can set a value in minutes and seconds up to 90 minutes. So that'll now count down from 90 minutes, as you can see there. There's Gaming Counter, and what this does is you have to set this up in the OST Sidekick software. So when certain button combinations are pressed, it will count this on the screen. It'll count up for you. And also be aware that you can have any combination of these active at once. You can have them all active if you want, or just two of them, or just one of them. But what this does is it will show the refresh rate that the monitor's running at, and if you've got Adaptive Sync active, that will alter as the frame rate of the content alters within the variable refresh rate window of the display. So I've just got NVIDIA's G-Sync Pendulum demo open, so you can see that that is fluctuating, and that matches the frame rate of the display, because I'm, I'm using NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode, we do the same with AMD FreeSync on an AMD FreeSync compatible system or GPU as well. Next up you've got Crosshair, an on-screen Crosshair, various different styles. I'll actually show you this in the OSD Sidekick software because you can configure these there. But the Style 1, which is the default, Custom 1, Custom 2 and Custom 3. So that's the ones that you can create in the OSD Sidekick software. But that's just the default one, just a little green cross in the middle of the screen there. In the middle of the screen, but not the middle of the video, if that makes sense. So just there. And just the final feature there is display alignment, which just shows you this little pattern on the screen to help you align multiple displays. On now to the main menu. You can see there's some basic information at the top there, and that changes depending on where in the menu you are. The gaming section first, aim stabilizer, this is a strobe backlight setting, and the monitor will flicker when I enable this. You need to have AMD FreeSync Premium deactivated, and what this does, AMD FreeSync Premium, it controls adaptive sync on the monitor, so it would let you use AMD FreeSync Premium or NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode, depending on your GPU. I'm about to activate Aim Stabilizer, and this is a strobe backlight feature, so you will see flickering on the video, so consider this a flicker warning. Actually, because it's at 240 Hz, it flickers at a frequency matching the refresh rate of the display. That could be 240 Hz, it can be 200 Hz, 165, 144, or 120. I believe those are what you can set it at. So at 120, actually, my camera filters that out very well, so you can't really see anything happening. But anyway, this feature is explored in the written review. Next up, you've got Black Equalizer 2.0. And actually, I'm going to show you Black Equalizer just Black Equalizer, Black Equalizer 1.0 first. A little bit confusing, they've got two different settings. You might have noticed that when I went over Black Equalizer 
it says note refresh rate will down to 165 hertz when this function is activated so for some reason you can only use black equalizer 2.0 at 165 hertz maximum the black equalizer main setting though you can use that at any refresh rate I've got Legom, legom.nl, and the black levels test open now, so I'll be able to show you what this does. Just remember that what you see on the video does not represent what you'd actually see firsthand on the monitor, but it will give you a vague idea of the effect this has. So when you increase the black equalizer, it lightens up those dark shades, makes them more visible, potentially very much more visible. You'll also notice that the black point, so you look at the black there, it increases as well, so you lose contrast when you increase this setting. If you decrease it, then it starts crushing things together, gives a more cinematic look. It's basically a reasonably targeted gamma enhancement that targets more the lower end, so for the dark shades. It doesn't affect the brighter shades as much, but that isn't to say it doesn't have an effect, especially with more extreme values. Just for comparison now, I'll show you Black Equalizer 2.0. Um, when you activate this, it will force it to 165 hertz, and you can have it set lower than 165 hertz as well if you want. It's actually forced it to 60 hertz, but I'll just show you 165 hertz. So you see in NVIDIA control panel, you can actually only select up to 165 hertz now. It's actually blocked off some of the refresh rates. We can see it's set to zero by default, so that's disabled. If you set it to one, what it does is it has a more targeted effect than the black equalizer 1.0 or the main black equalizer. Even just set to 1, it lifts up these shades quite nicely. 2 has a more dramatic effect, 3 more dramatic again. But it actually is very well targeted, or certainly much better targeted than the black equalizer 1.0 setting. It doesn't affect the black point, so it doesn't affect your contrast. And it doesn't affect the lighter shades as well. Sorry, the background's just inappropriately changed there, but actually I'll go with it. I'll just adjust the exposure on the camera so you can see the brighter background. Ignore what's happened to those blocks, just so you can focus on the background instead. So with this setting, it doesn't have a dramatic effect on the brighter shades. You can see with the background there, but for the dark shades in the background, you can definitely see it having an effect. Just be aware that without it active, things don't look that crushed together and dark. It's just because of how I've set the camera up at the moment. So essentially, I quite like this setting, actually, as far as black equalizer type settings go. It's a very good setting, very well implemented. Just a shame that you can't have it enabled above 165 hertz for some reason. Perhaps it uses extra bandwidth or something to actually make the changes it makes. I'm not really sure of the technicalities, but that's what they've done anyway. Next up, the super resolution. This is a sharpness filter. And you can increase that a bit if you like the effect, that's fine, but I personally don't like the effect at all, except when I'm using a non-native resolution. I sometimes like to set this to 1, for example, if I'm running the monitor in the full HD resolution. I can help offset some of the softening you get from that, and that's explored in the interpolation and upscaling section of the recent review. Next is display mode. So these are scaling settings. They're not available if you've got AMD FreeSync Premium active. If you've got that active, then it's going to be set to full all the time. No matter what you do here, it's going to be greyed out, but it's going to be as if it's set to full. I'm now running in the full HD resolution, so you'll be able to see what these do. So there's full, it's using all of the pixels, it's using an interpolation, a scaling process to fill out all of the pixels of the display, all 2560 by 1440 of them. The aspect setting is not going to make a difference for this resolution because it is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio anyway, just like the native resolution of the monitor. But if it was a different aspect ratio, it would actually respect the aspect ratio. And rather than stretching it to fill out all of the pixels, it would have a black border for some of it, so it's not distorted. So it does respect the aspect ratio. There's a one-to-one -one setting, which has a black border around the screen. So it's only using the pixels called for by the source resolution, 1920 by 1080 in this case. The rest are just the black border. And there are also various sort of emulation modes, if you want to call it that. You can use these at any resolution you want, but you can also use this at the native resolution. So I'm just going to switch back to the native resolution now. So what I'll do is I'll just cycle through these and let you look at them. I know some people like to see the effect and what it looks like. I would say, though, that if the aspect ratio isn't 16 by 9, it does squash things up, as you might expect.
and then back to full. Since I've got the camera set up so nicely showing the whole of the screen, I'm going to actually skip ahead to the PIP picture in picture, P by P picture by picture settings. So it now has a sub source there and the main source for the rest of the screen. I've only got one thing connected, so you can only see the main source anyway. So that's your basic PIP functionality. You can change the size of that box as well. That's large, well as medium or small. You can change the location of the box on the screen. So that's right bottom or, or left bottom, as they say there, very bad typo there. Right top, left top. That's not exactly a bad typo, but it's a little bit of an oversight anyway. Display switch, that'll just switch the sources. So the sub source and main source are switched, which I'm not gonna do, because I'll just have a tiny little thing show on my computer there. Audio switch, so you can select if it's the main or the sub source that you want associated with the audio. Next is PBP, picture by picture. So by default, it will give you an undistorted image there. So it's really one-to-one -one scaled. It's scaled down, but isn't stretched. So it fills up a lot of the vertical screen space. If you select full instead of aspect, it will then stretch it. Depending on the resolution you're running at, it might look less stretched and less weird than that. So you can set that up according to your own preferences. And then again, there's display switch and audio switch, just like there was with PIP. So as you can see, it's just two sources. So back to the good old gaming section now. Next you've got overdrive, that's the pixel response time settings, pixel overdrive settings, great gray acceleration, whatever you want to call it. Those settings for the monitor, picture quality, balance and speed, and they're explored in the review. AMD FreeSync Premium, I've already shown you that. You can activate that or deactivate that. It actually controls adaptive sync, as I mentioned. And then black equalizer, which I've been through earlier. Next picture that allows you to change the preset used by the monitor. So there's the three custom presets. You can set all of this up how you want. Standard, Aorus, FPS. I'm not gonna go through these because it makes the video horrendously long and it's gonna be very long anyway. Basically, they all just make various adjustments, which you can just make yourself in the OSD. So you can see, for example, FPS changes sharpness to four, which is a bit weird. And it sets contrast to 40, again, a bit of a strange adjustment, brightness to 85. And you can make any adjustment you want in this preset or any of the presets. So just to make it obvious, I'm gonna set brightness to zero. It will then remember it for just that preset. Then if you go back to it, it'll have your settings recalled. So there's basically full functionality, full flexibility with all of these presets. It doesn't block off anything in the menu that you wouldn't expect to be blocked off. The exception to that is sRGB, and that's because that's an sRGB emulation setting, and it does allow you to adjust brightness, but you can't adjust the contrast, and you can't adjust anything else on this menu. It's all grayed out, except for brightness. In the gaming section there with the sRGB setting, you can't adjust black equalizer either. It seems you can adjust black equalizer 2.0, which is quite interesting, but I'm not sure if you'd necessarily want to do that. But uh, again, that would restrict you to... Um, actually, you didn't even realize I'm running at 120 hertz at the moment anyway, because I was fiddling around with all of this stuff before. So I've just set black equalizer 2.0 to on. I'm in the sRGB setting. See, this is a learning experience for me. I didn't realize you could even do this. But yes, you can actually adjust black equalizer 2.0 with this setting, if you so desire. So essentially all of these settings you'd expect to see can be activated except for black equalizer 1.0, if you want to call it that. A key thing to be aware of though, as I said, these grayed out. It also means that you can't adjust the color temperature, the color channels. Anyway, the sRGB setting, it is explored in the written review and a bit in the video review as well. But what it does is it clamps the gamut to sRGB, reduces the saturation levels significantly, and it's designed for more accurate output of sRGB content. Then you've got your custom settings, and of course you can just set them up however you want. I've actually got custom ones set up as my test settings. I've got custom two set up for my relaxing evening viewing settings, so very effective low blue light activated there, and I'll go through that kind of thing shortly. And custom three is just the same as custom one, but with a different pixel overdrive setting, just for some testing purposes. But the settings here, you've got brightness, contrast, Color Vibrance, this is a digital saturation adjustment. So if you increase this, it pulls shades closer to the edge of the gamut without increasing the gamut itself. So you lose shade variety. 
and things look a lot more saturated than they should. Native gamut of this monitor is so generous that most users will find it more than saturated enough without adding colour vibrance on top. It might even be tempting to actually reduce this a bit instead, so it has the opposite effect that reduces your saturation levels a bit. What I would say though is that the same that I often say with this kind of setting is it's quite tricky to get the balance right. I find that some shades remain oversaturated and some start to become undersaturated as you lower this a bit. But it's really just something you adjust according to your own preferences and it is a nice flexibility to have either way. Sharpness, again you'd adjust that according to your own preferences but I find 5, a neutral level appropriate for the native resolution. Gamma, again explored in the written review, various different settings there. Colour temperature, user define allows you to change the red, green and blue colour channels manually. There's cool, which gives a cool tint, a very high white point. Normal, which is the factory default. Warm, which gives you a warm look and gives you a low white point. And it's essentially a, a mild to moderate low blue light setting, and that's explored in the written review as well. Low blue light, that's your main low blue light setting. You can change this between zero, which is disabled, and 10, which is the full effect. I actually find that having this set to 10 isn't quite as effective as I'd like personally, so I combine a setting of 6 with the warm low blue light setting, which is more effective than warm alone, and also more effective than low blue light set to 10 on its own. A little bit confusing, I know, but aside from it being more effective, I'm not saying it's not effective, the low blue light setting on its own, it, it is, but another thing is that it imparts a green tint to the image, and I explore this in the review, that's because it doesn't weaken the green channel. The warm setting, the alternative low blue light setting, that doesn't have the green tint. And I find if I combine 6 with the warm setting, as I do with my custom 2 profile here, it doesn't have a nasty green tint, it's basically more balanced to my eyes, and it works very effectively. And it is mentioned in the written review, but the reason that the green channel is maintained to a strong level is because that maintains the contrast better. If you reduce the green channel, you start ebbing away at the static contrast, so that's why manufacturers will often just leave the green channel alone or just lower it slightly. Next you've got dynamic contrast, that's explored in the written review. You can set that between 0, which is disabled, and 5, and all increasing this will do from 1 to 5 is it basically just increases the gamma. So it makes things look darker. You can probably see that quite clearly from the image there. Sensei Demo, I always find this a bit strange, but what this does is it gives you a split screen image where half of the screen will show you your current settings and the other half will show you any adjustments you make after you've enabled the Sensei Demo setting. The thing to remember though is it is a little bit confusing because it's not going to show you some adjustments because some adjustments are going to apply to both sides of the screen. Brightness, for example, there's only one backlight, so that's going to adjust the whole thing. On some screens I've seen gamma applied to both sides, but on this one it only applies to one side of the screen, so that's actually quite good. So it lets you see the relative effect of the different gamma settings. That's quite useful actually. Colour temperature, that's only applied to one side as well, low blue light. So actually a lot of this is only applied to one side. I haven't really been through this in a lot of detail, it's not something I make use of myself, but if you're new to setting up monitors or you'd like to see the effect of different settings, this actually can be quite useful. Just be aware that your brightness definitely applies universally. Oh, and speaking of universal, if you set the colour temperature to user define and you make changes here, they apply to all of your presets. This is a universal setting, so you can't have some presets set to completely different RGB values to the other. You can still have some set to warm, some to normal, some to cool, or some to use define, and again you can use the low blue light settings on top and that makes different adjustments as well, but you can't manually adjust the RGBs for different presets. And I might not have mentioned before, but when you make changes in the gaming section here, for example to overdrive, that's also remembered for your different presets. There's then reset picture which will reset the picture settings to the factory default, I think just for this preset. I'm not going to try it because I've got things set up very nicely at the moment, and I'd rather not reset everything. And I'm just going to switch on HDR so I can show you how that affects the things you can set in the menu. Spoiler alert, it locks off a lot of stuff. So I've just activated HDR. Now when I go into the menu system, You'll see the picture is completely greyed out, so you can't do anything there, you can't change your colour channels, you can't change brightness or anything like that. 
You can still change the black equalizer 2.0, which is, again, very interesting, actually. And you can change super resolution as well. Overdrive. Display mode, I'm assuming that would be something you could use if you've got AMD FreeSync Premium deactivated. So let's do that and let's see. As I say, again, it's a learning experience for me. I haven't used some of these settings in combination before. But yes, you can see display mode is now adjustable, even with HDR active. So is overdrive. Aim stabilizer is never going to be something you can use with HDR. Completely different backlight control mechanism there. Next up, there's display. You can change the input used by the monitor, HDMI 1, HDMI 2 display port. HDMI RGB PC range, you can set that to RGB 0 to 255, and you can actually change this when you're using DisplayPort as well, but you shouldn't really want to do that. But basically, RGB 16 to 235, that's a limited range RGB. If you don't know what to use, or you just want to use what should be appropriate for your system, it'll be auto-detect. Most PC users and most modern games console users, they're going to be using a full range RGB signal. But there are some systems which would want to use a limited range signal, so if you want to enforce that, make sure it's definitely doing that. That's what that setting's for. As overscan, which only applies to older systems, it's grayed out most of the time. PIP, P by P, which I've gone through earlier. System, you can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. RGB LED. I'm not going to spend too long showing you this, and that's because even if you're sitting in a completely dark room as I am now, it doesn't do anything for you from the front. You really have to have... I mean, you can, have, you can see the tiniest little glow, but it really is. It's nothing. It's certainly not a bias light or anything even close to that. It doesn't really do anything for you from the front. But if you go around the back of the monitor, you can see that there's a little wing either side of the stand base. There's also some little patterns at the side of the stand neck. And there's a little Aorus Falcon logo. you got the same on the other side, a wing. That's the back of the screen, by the way. And then you got the stand neck at the side. Mode 2, that will give a different flashing pattern. I believe it is a sort of a rainbow cycle effect. You can see that there. And again, it's something which you can appreciate if you can see the back of your monitor. But I've got mine against the wall, and I know most people do, so... It's not always very useful. And then there's mode three, and that gives you a different rainbow cycling effect. If you install OSD Sidekick, it also comes with RGB Fusion 2.0 software. And to use this, you have to have your USB cable connected. You do also need to have your USB cable connected to use OSD Sidekick. And as I know some people get a bit confused by this, but you have to connect it to the USB upstream port of the monitor, and that's the USB type B port. So that's the kind of squished up looking one, not one that looks like a regular USB type A port. So you can see that one here. So they're the regular USB type A ports, they're downstream, then that's the upstream one there. Anyway, you've got two different zones. You've got your outer zones, your wings, and you've got everything on the stand. So that Aorus Falcon logo and the little side bits and you can control them separately. You can have it set to a nice boring white, if you'd like, or you can have it set to any other color you want. You can set the brightness, and if you've got a flashing pattern selected, there are various different flashing patterns, you can change the speed of that, and you can save these as a profile, if you wish. So I've just set this to white, you can then press apply, and it'll apply it for you. So it's kind of a cool white, so not particularly exciting, but uh, it could be a bit more adventurous if you like. And also various different flashing patterns or colour cycles, which is that rainbow effect. So if you wanted, you could have the Falcon logo and stuff on the sides doing this colour cycling effect. And you can change the speed as well, you can have it cycle very quickly. And you can have the outside doing something completely different. You get the idea. So there you go, you've got a nice disco Falcon going on at the moment. The outside a bit more vanilla. There's also an app for Android and Apple, which you can use, I believe. Uh, I don't have it myself, haven't played around with it, but if you press settings, it talks about it here. So that's something you can use as well, if you're interested. As it says there, the program will now be closed and the lighting effect will no longer be controlled. So if you're not using the RGB Fusion software, it will still remember what you've set it up to do. But if you then go to RGB LED, in the OSD and change this, 
to anything else. So I'll change that and I'll change it back to mode three. It'll just default to what it was doing before with mode three. So in summary, not a particularly useful feature, not a particularly well implemented feature. I know not everyone likes RGB LED features. Personally, I find them useful if they give a nice aura, a nice glow around the screen. So it can be used as a bias light. If not, at least something you can see from the front, please. Next, you've got headphone. You can change the volume of anything connected to the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, or you can mute that. It's also setting 600R. I have no idea what that is. I think it's some kind of audio enhancement of some description. There was something mentioned with one of the firmware updates, and I do have the latest firmware at the moment. And I think that might have something to do with it. Perhaps they've named it incorrectly there, or perhaps 600R means something to someone. But to me, I, audio is really not my area. I've got no idea what that actually means. Hey, at least I'm honest. OSD settings, display time. I should really have changed that to 30 seconds so it doesn't keep collapsing in, but basically this is just how long the OSD will be displayed after the last button press before automatically disappearing. OSD transparency, you can change the level of transparency. Quite happy with the default of 20. OSD lock, this is always a good one if I can't work out how to unlock it, so I've activated that. And if you twiddle the joystick or press the joystick, it just says the button is locked, confirmed to unlock the OSD. So that's pretty straightforward how you unlock that one. You then got quick switch. So this was what I was referring to near the start of the video where you twiddle the joystick up, down, left or right without pressing another button. So this allows you to quickly change various things. So you can have aim stabilizer, black equalizer 2.0, low blue light, volume, input, contrast, brightness, or picture mode. So you can see you can't have anything you want, but you can have various things. So if you often change brightness, you don't have to use all four, by the way. You could have brightness set to up and down, as I've done here. You can have right and left changing your picture mode, and you can have four functions if you prefer. But basically, if I twiddle the joystick up or down, this lets me very quickly adjust the brightness, left or right, very quickly adjust that picture mode. So I can very quickly switch between my normal test settings, for example, and low blue light, or between my test settings and the same thing, but with a different overdrive setting. So it's very good functionality here that they give you with the OSD. Next, there's other settings. There's resolution notice. That just gives you a little notice in the middle of the screen when you change resolution. If the, the monitor changes resolution and it's using scaling or anything like that, you can turn that off if it's annoying you. If, you, if you're frequently changing resolutions and you don't want to see that, that's fine. Input auto switch, that will allow it to select the input that it's being used automatically, or you can have that disabled if you want to always be manually selecting that. You then got auto power off, and that means the monitor will automatically switch off after a given amount of time. LED indicator, so that's that little power LED, you can have it so it's always on, which is the default. If you don't want it to be bothering you, if it's bothering you, it's actually very dim. I don't find it bothersome at all, but I know some people like to have it off completely, even when the monitor's on, and that's what always off does, or standby on, which will mean it's on if the monitor enters a low power state, but it will be off when the screen is switched on. DisplayPort ver, DisplayPort version, you can change that to 1.4, HDR, which will give you the full functionality of the monitor, or for compatibility purposes, 1.2 or 1.1 if you've connected to an older system which doesn't support 1.4. Save settings, that allows you to save or quickly recall various different sets of settings. And with this, you can make some adjustments which you wouldn't be able to save to the different presets. For example, if you want to change color channels to different things, then they will be saved and reloaded with settings one, settings two, and settings three. Reset all will reset everything to the factory defaults. Moving on now to the OSD Sidekick software. There's a link to this in the description of the video where you can download it from. As I mentioned earlier, you need the USB upstream cable connected to the monitor to use this. And once you've done that, various different settings you can change here. First of all, there's display settings. This is a little bit weird because you'll see it has most of them there, but notable emissions, it doesn't have custom one, custom two, or custom three. You can make changes here and then save them and recall them with these settings, but that doesn't link to the custom one, custom two, and custom three, which you'd select in the OSD. I find it a bit strange. I've noticed this with other monitors. It's not just this one. It's just with the OSD Sidekick software, the way they lay this out, it's a little bit strange, but that's how they've done it. By the way, if I miss something off, it's probably because I don't actually know what it does, like link AP. 
I'm not sure what that means, for example. You know, if anyone knows, feel free to mention in the comments section. But you can change things like brightness, contrast, sharpness, black equaliser. Oh, and just something I've noticed, this is probably a bug with the version of OSD Psychic I'm using, or this monitor, or some combination of the two. But I've noticed that when I open OSD Sidekick, it completely changes the quick switch settings, it sets them to something completely different. So if you remember, I had up and down set to brightness, left and right set to change the preset. It now has it set to input for right, black equalizer for up, brightness for down, and volume for left. So it's a bit annoying actually, it resets your quick switch every time you open this. It's probably a bug that they could fix, and hopefully they will do. But you can see various different settings there. It doesn't have everything, but you can change black equalizer 2.0. This is something I am a bit confused about, I have to say, because it seems that you can change it even at 240 hertz now, or any other resolution. However, it's simply because it isn't black equalizer 2.0. It's actually the regular black equalizer setting. If you remember, 2.0 started at 0, then went up to, I think it was... 10 or 8 or I can't really remember but it didn't start at 10 as a neutral position. Black Equalizer 1.0 did and you'll also remember that if you increase Black Equalizer 2.0 it didn't lift up the black point but the regular Black Equalizer did and you can see it's very clearly doing that. The black becomes flooded, very greyish. So they've just labelled that incorrectly there. Various other things and if you go to colour temperature user define and click on that it will bring up your red, green, and blue color channels, so you can adjust them there. The crosshair, this is where you can customize your crosshair if you want. You can have three different custom crosshair designs. So you just click on one there, click on the little pen icon or pencil icon, whatever it was, and you can edit it here. You choose one color, the whole crosshair is one color. Then you just draw your design. This isn't going to be a very useful crosshair, but doesn't matter, it's just going to show you what it does. You then press save. And there's also export and import if you want to save them to your system and recall them later or use them on a different system or a different monitor. That supports this functionality, of course. You can't just take them onto a completely different monitor that doesn't support this. So there we go, it's got my amazing crosshair design in the middle there. I'm going to just, just change the background so you can see it in all its glory. Great purple squiggle. Functionally speaking, I think the default design is a little bit more useful than mine. So you can see some of the functionality here includes the dashboard, which I mentioned before, and that this is something which you need to have Sidekick open to see. But all this does is it puts some information, top right, top left of the screen, sorry, or wherever you've told it to display, so you can have up or down. Okay, so I did think you could have it on the left or right side, maybe I'm misremembering. So it had up or down for the location there. And I pressed setting and it went a bit crazy. Okay, so if you press setting, you can say what it's showing you. It doesn't necessarily populate all of this. It depends on your peripherals and your hardware as to which things it will actually be able to report. But you can see it has things like the GPU temperature and the CPU frequency, various other things there. So I've gone into dashboard in the OSD. Dashboard location. So for some reason, you can have it on the right side of the screen, which makes sense if you want. But the Sidekick software only has up and down. Very weird. Never mind. Doesn't really matter. You get the idea. And you can control some things from the Game Assist menu, like the refresh rate counter, gaming timer, that kind of thing. Next up, there's hotkeys. This can be quite useful, actually. Lots of different things you can set here. So there's some listed here already. Just read them in your own time, but you can see things like black equalizer there, brightness, aim stabilizer, other functions here which you can add to your list and start configuring if you like. So you can quickly change the overdrive setting, for example, using various different key presses. The nice thing is, if you do frequently like to change things like brightness whilst you're in a game or something like that, this will work even in full screen applications. So you can have Alt, Shift and your desired key press or Control and your desired key press or whatever combination of Alt, Shift and Control you want. And you can easily change the brightness, increase it or decrease it or 
various other functions there. So it's quite useful. And this is also how you would configure that gaming counter, the counter feature I was showing you earlier. General setting, so it allows you to change the input, OSD transparency level. That isn't the OSD sidekicks transparency level, that's actually the OSD itself, the display time, various other things, the power indicator, RGB controller. If you press setting, I assume it will just open RGB fusion. Yes, I would be correct. Please wait. Please wait. Please wait. Oh, you see that? It changed colour. And that's another thing. The Aorus models have... Hmm, strange, it's showing blue again. Yeah, the Aorus models have this kind of orange colour for the OSD. That's their colour scheme, whereas regular Gigabyte models have this blue colour. And you can change your quick switch here as well. Quite a nice little way of doing that. ANC, active noise cancellation or active noise cancelling. And this is used for microphones that we'd have connected to the monitor if you're using that. I, I don't use that, so I haven't tested this, I'm afraid. And it's really not my area, as I said. I'm very honest about it, audio. I'm not really um, an audio person. I appreciate good sound quality, but beyond that, I'm not really in a position to review that kind of thing. Active noise cancelling, on or off. And, and I have had user feedback about this setting, and people do say it does work well, and they like it. So it is useful. You can configure that if you like to use that. There's then about, and this is useful, particularly useful thing here is monitor firmware. So it shows you your current firmware version. If you press download, it will, I think if there's a newer version available, it will usually tell you uh, here, and then you press download, you can download it. It will then run you through everything itself to update it through this software. As long as you're not losing power and you're not disconnecting the USB cable or your system doesn't crash or something, which it shouldn't do, or at least it shouldn't because of OSD Sidekick. It should be fine. I've updated various gigabyte monitors before. I haven't had any issues. I know lots of people have as well. Feel free to do that. It's a good utility to have. And gigabyte are quite active with their firmware updates, so they have been on other models. So be sure to, to check that periodically and update it every now and then. And there's the same for OSD Sidekick. If there's a new version of OSD Sidekick available, it will show it here. It seems I've got the latest version. And actually, for this monitor, as I'm using it at the moment, it's new to the market, I think this is actually beta version of the software. So it might be that this functionality doesn't work properly, which is why it's not showing me what the current versions available are. But if you go on the Gigabyte website, you will be able to see the latest version of Sidekick and the firmware and download it from there. And you can then use this utility to apply any firmware updates. So that's really all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Gigabyte Aorus FI27QX. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.